Hey everybody, Claudia here. It is Wednesday. We are back with a brand new episode of TGIF. I know y'all been waiting because I'm getting all the messages and I see y'all in the chat. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, get you a little something to drink because you know we're about to go in. All right, fellas, let me introduce my co-hosts. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? Hey, I guess I'm the only one today with a whole bunch of energy. What's up, Claudia? Hey, everybody, I got to see Claudia this week. <laughs> It was so much fun seeing her. We got to hang out. We went to Cafe Milano and everybody. I don't know if y'all seen Claudia in person lately, but she is skinny, <laughs> like skinny, like a toothpick skinny. Like no, she's I'm wasting, not. she is wasting away everybody. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I think she might be getting ready for, you know, mm -hmm. what, baby? <laughs> if I have a baby, that's the second coming of J baby Jesus. I must be 50 years old. That's <laughs> She's really skinny, though. Looking good, though, Claudia. It was great seeing you. Thank you. It was great to see you, too. And we got a, some really cute pictures that we both posted on our pages today. So please go check them out. And Al was, of course, dressed to the nines, like always. <laughs> like always. And also, please welcome fresh off of Art Basel festivities and viruses. Funky Donnie. What's up, Q? What's going on? And let me tell you and Al something. Don't be FaceTiming me late at night, okay? <laughs> no, I'm in bed. I got the lights off. I ain't got no clothes on. Al and Claudia come FaceTiming me late at night, past reasonable hours. I'm a virtuous woman. I don't oh, like please. my phone ringing after 10 o'clock, okay? And they come calling me, and Al talking about, turn the light on. I'm like, <laughs> and Claudia's what? like, who in the bed with you? <laughs> Show us the empty bed. <laughs> First of all, you always look like that when we FaceTime you. You never have clothes on. Every time you go on Instagram, you look exactly like that. Like, I don't know how that's all different right. than all the countless videos. You always in bed. Child, <laughs> got an IV today. Child, let me tell you about it. You look exactly like that. And it was oh, only man. about 10 p.m. That's right. Resident L? Yeah, it was only 10 p.m. Yeah, I, I know what I'm surprised. trying to do. I'm trying to unlock my better self. I'm going hey, to bed early these days. Here. Oh, he must be sick. What you drinking on tonight, Q? What's up? They're fluent Lipton tea, y'all. 60,000 people brought their ass to Miami for Art Basel and brought all their germs, so I don't caught some type of bug. Oh, okay. Well, I hope you feel better. We really do. I'm mm -hmm. drinking. I'm Ow. drinking. I'll drink for everybody. I'm having a white wine. I, I was in D.C. for like five days. I was out there for a long time. Al had went so hard the night before that he couldn't even hang out the next day. You know, that's a <laughs> lot for Al because Al can power through. He's like the all Energizer right. Bunny. And then, you know, we finally got to hang out, but all right, good times. I also hit the casino too. That was fun. Oh, and you won. Don't nobody be in my DMs asking me for money to pay their rent. I ain't got it. <laughs> I ain't got it. All right, y'all. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, a lot to talk about. I, I can't wait till we get to the election coverage because I was up all night. That was major. But let's get into the show. Uh, Nia Long and May, and May Yudaka have officially entered Sp Splitsville. A source revealed to people that the situation is unfortunate and painful. But Nia is focusing on her children and rebuilding her life. Now, a representative for Nia Long confirmed the news and shared that Nia and Emma are no longer together, but remain fully committed to co-parenting their son, Kez. Is anyone surprised? Or did y'all think they'd get back together? Q, I, no, you thought that she should stay with them. What do you think about this story? You know what? I'm, I'm actually surprised that they split. Um, granted, she's got good cause, too. I'm just wondering if she's still waiting on the Celtics to call and check on her. <laughs> <laughs> So crazy. Okay. That's it though. Okay. All right. Al, what you think? Listen, I'm I'm this. I'm gonna break it down like real, real. I'm definitely surprised that they split. And I think it's bull crap. Honestly, just from the gut of my feeling, think about it. She's been with him for 13 years, Claudia and Q, and they have a kid together. She knows her man. She, for 13 years, they haven't been married, but they've been dating on and off. She knows what's going on with her man. And I think she knows his lifestyle as an athlete and as a huge coach for an NBA team that was going for the championship, right? This is what I think. I think that she was publicly humiliated and personally provoked by her fan base. This is my opinion, by her fan base to discontinue her relationship with this man. I think the overwhelming judgment of people coming to her defense and saying, Queen, you don't deserve this. You are, you do, you're the best, blah, 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 blah. 
I think that forced her to make this snap decision. I know a lot of women, a lot of women in reality television and entertainment that these types of pressures from their fan base and the public scrutiny pushes them to do things that normally they would give second chances for. That's what I feel like is the situation here. Okay, well, uh, first of all, I'm going to say this, being a coach for anybody's team, I don't care if you coach in Little League, if you my man, you ain't cheat on me and getting away with it. It's not happening. That's number one for me. Number two, um, Nia Long, if she was with them for 13 years, right, and they still hadn't gotten married, but they were engaged, there was probably some underlying issues there. Maybe this was the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, and when you are when you are a celebrity like that, being publicly humiliated, it, I think the stakes are a little bit higher. Just like she can't embarrass him publicly, he can't embarrass her. And when you, one of them breaks that promise, it's it is devastating. And you're right, Al. The fans do put ten on twenty, and does make the wound feel a lot worse. But it doesn't. I think if she really wanted to be with him, she would have stayed with him and, and f all our feelings. She's probably sick of him. This hmm. probably ain't and like. This probably ain't the first, time. the first time. I'm just about right. to say, it probably ain't the first time. So, like you right. said, it's probably the straw that broke. The camel's back. I'm just still wondering if she waited. The Celtics people, Celtics people. <laughs> y'all should call around her new house and check on her since that's what she's expecting of y'all's organization. So somebody call around there and see about her. Oh, my God. I know it sounds ridiculous, but she probably, I guess because she, she felt like they put it out there so publicly, right? And she's right. like, heads up. Um, they probably didn't see it at the Christmas parties and all kind of things. All the wives have probably been faking her face. All the executives' wives probably been faking her face, mm -hmm, saying mm -hmm. what's up. You know what I mean? When you think about it like that, then I can think about maybe, you know, somebody's wife should have been hit me up and been like, hey, girl, they about to put this publicly in the news. Not the Celtics really reach out, but oh, she, you're, there's a sisterhood with all the wives and girlfriends. Y'all, we all sit together in the same section. There's a, a whole little area. Hold and on, I just what you like, just said... Huh? I meant them. They <laughs> all sit and together. Now she get her one little piece of man. Now she talking right. about me. Now she part of the basketball <laughs> wives club. Girl, shut up. Right. Get off my line. That's right. Me and Jennifer Williams. Okay. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> you see how she but she change that conversation in two <laughs> seconds. Listen, what more do y'all want from me? I done gave y'all enough. All I right, hope you on. don't have to get a call from the organization, honey. <laughs> <laughs> get checked off. Well, I got a big mouth. I ain't near. Right. I get embarrassed. Everybody get embarrassed. I'm just letting you know right now. Okay. Moving on. The craziness has come to an end, everybody. And Raphael Warnock is the projected winner of the Georgia runoff against the man who should never be a candidate for anything ever again in life who believes the coon is the smartest animal out there, Herschel Walker. Now, the person who seems to be the most excited about Warnock's uh, victory is none other than Christian Walker, Herschel's son. Christian tweeted, don't beat women, don't hold guns to people's heads, fund abortions, then pretend you're pro-life, stalk cheerleaders, leave your multiple minor children alone to chase more fame, lie, 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 say, stupid crap and make a fool of your family and then maybe you can win a senate seat al i'm gonna go to you first what are your thoughts on warnock's win and are you here for christian walker's tweets let's start with the positive the positive is yes i'm here for his win thank goodness thank goodness because we know in the initial runoff Herschel Walker was able to get close to 2 million votes. And that, to me, scared me. It had me nervous. But I'm really glad that Warnock won. We know that this win will give the Democrat Party the, the majority in the Senate. And that majority in the Senate can help or should be able to help Biden as he decides if he's going to run again a second term. Now, as it relates to the tweets from The Sun, now, I, I completely understand his disdain for his dad, but his son's tweets, as well as Herschel Walker in general, they, they both are just bizarre to me. Number one, how does an uneducated, um, a barely speak English, borderline illiterate and self-proclaimed abuser of women actually even get a nomination to be a Senate, to be a senator. That's number one. And number two, how did he even garner two million votes? That's number two. I but I don't feel like this was the correct forum for his son to really dig up and throw that trash like that. Um, even though I kind of liked it, I thought it was, you know, somewhat noble. I just don't think that's the right forum for him to heal from the trauma that his dad has created in his life. Okay. Q, what do you think? 
I don't think his intention was to heal. I think he's trying to sully his father's name and he's probably angry. But I'm curious to know, when did the shift in the son and Herschel's relationship happen? Because I remember back during those Trump times, the son was on board with Herschel and he was talking all type of crazy, radical, conservative talk. And then out of nowhere, he kind of flipped the script and stepped into the light like Carol Ann. Um, I'm glad that Elon Musk's Twitter is still around enough for Christian to be able to do this. And um, yeah, Christian, thank you for going in on your daddy so we didn't have to. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna actually credit Christian Walker with Herschel Walker losing this election because up until then, there weren't as many negative things out there about um, Herschel. Like they, you know, then stuff started to come out more. I think he got mad, um, Q, when he was asked about. Christian's mother, and he really he tried to deny it. Yeah, I think that. And I think he got offended, like, "How dare you deny my mother like, our pain?" And I think that's when he went in, that's and when that he is out. Mm-hmm. he a loose cannon, and he gets on my damn nerves. But I was here for all of it, and uh, if he's going to um, help Herschel Walker not get in office, then I'm okay with it. The sad thing is, America, the amount of votes that Herschel Walker did get, Ooh. and I I didn't like that Herschel Walker was paraded around like the big black buck of the South that was going to, was going to help these white people take this, get this vote. And then they were going to use him to do their bidding and to, to do their dirty work. We all know Herschel Walker has no idea. He's never talked about any kind of policy. The only talking point he had was, uh, Raphael Warnock votes with Joe Biden 96% of the time. That's the only thing he ever said outside of this outlandish stuff that has nothing to do with politics. He talked about werewolves, coons, abortions, not writing a check. He talked about everything but policy. And then you went up against a really good candidate that actually has a good reputation as a good upstanding citizen of, you know, of America. And Uh, did you hear him last week when he said he didn't know what a pronoun was? He just sick and tired of him. I'm like, come on, y'all. You know, and and it's funny because white people or, or the powers that be that put him in power. I'm upset because y'all thought we were that stupid. Right. Y'all literally thought, oh, go get a black athlete and the black people, they will just flock to them because that's that's what they do. They shuck and jive and tap dance. And y'all don't understand. Y'all can't just go get any old black man. You got to go get an Andrew Gillum or a Cory Booker type of black man if you're trying to get our attention. Not no damn Herschel Walker. Do you know, the, 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 the super crazy part to me is that 70% of the voters, 70% of the voters that voted for him were white Americans. You know, somehow when we pick these um, rhymes with spoonish candidates, it makes them feel a little less guilty about being racist, but you can still be racist as a poor, uh, a, a complete point, ridic- Claudia. Yeah, Pretty like much. they feel, I, these Republicans think they're slick, right? They'll support a black candidate that doesn't kind of follow the traditional lines and things that we defend and we say that we need that does their bidding. I sat in an ar- uh, airplane and argued with this white woman about this when she told me Tim Scott said racism doesn't exist, so therefore it doesn't exist. And we got into a huge fight about it. They love black Negroes, right? I'm gonna use that term uh, because that's what they probably did say or worse, that that do their bidding and that behave and listen and fall in line and they can mm. get behind that. And then when it's a black man against a black man, we can't say that they're racist. They think that takes the argument away. But the way you had Herschel Walker sitting there between Ted Cruz, which everyone hates him in the Republican Party, and uh, was it Lindsey Graham, whoever the other one was, and like like they were his handlers. It was so embarrassing. It was so reminiscent of this is our black buck that's going to do our bidding, and we're, we're we're his puppet masters. And I was I felt bad for Herschel in that moment. I really did because I feel like he doesn't even know what's going on. Anyway, he lost, girl. What's the next thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the next one is Latasha Scott and her husband and the woman. Child, who that ain't no damn better. <laughs> the woman who claims someone hacked her social media and posted about an alleged affair with Scott's husband, Rocky Bivens. The woman now claims that Rocky Bivens manipulated her into claiming her page was hacked. And she recently posted this on Instagram. Good morning. I just want to say I was misled. I was told we were going to be together. He told me he was married, but not in the marriage, that they were not actually together, and his plan was to leave her. She continued, I was manipulated into dropping that last post about my page being hacked, I'm guessing for his own selfish reasons. I apologize to my family and his family 
for all the confusion, and that's the truth. Now, she also posted text messages between her and Vivens to prove her case. What are your thoughts on this update? Al, what you, what you think about this? I don't know. Something about this is, is it's not adding up, but it's not making any sense to me, right? Um, and in and, and all honesty, I don't want to talk about Miss Fucha or whatever her name is and all of her nonsense and her antics. One minute she's pregnant. One minute she's she's hacked and that wasn't true. The next minute she's not hacked, but she doesn't mention anything about the pregnancy. Actually, I don't want to hear from her at all. You know who I want to hear from? I want to hear from Rocky. Rocky needs to issue a statement or address this issue ASAP, or I'm going to start looking at him side, line, side eye. I need to know who's this woman. What was that line that Squeak said from Color Purple? Y'all remember Squeak from oh, Color oh, Purple? Who, this woman? Oh, oh, who is that? <laughs> who that woman? <laughs> mm -hmm. I need to know who is that woman? Are you involved with her? Have you ever had relations with her? And why does she have your telephone number and texting you? And why is she in the middle of an already messy situation between you and your wife and escape? And why did it happen at this time? I think he needs to come out and give us some answers. Otherwise, I'm gonna look at both of them side eye. Good points. Q, what do you think? So look, I'm gonna drop a little bit of tea. I got an email a couple of days ago uh, with somebody sending me some screenshots of some more text messages, allegedly, between Rocky and them. Uh, and the email said, uh, more cheating tees and more women will be coming forward. Now, I can't confirm the validity of the emails or whatever the case may be. But, Al, I'm going to disagree with you about Rocky making a statement. I think him and Natasha are doing the right thing. Every time you say something, you restart the news cycle. You give the blogs something new to post about. If they just let this woman talk and handle their business privately, this whole situation will die out and we will all be left wondering if it was true, false, or somewhere in the middle. So I think they're doing the right thing by just staying quiet and handling it privately. Mm. I feel bad for Latasha. I, I do too. I, I, I think she already has enough drama with the group and all the stuff that's going on that we don't really know the real deal with that. And then they have to, on the heels of that, have to deal with this. I want to say this. Latasha, um, I got a text from her the other day about the coverage of her on the show. And she actually um, was thankful for any kind words. And no woman, no matter how you feel about her with the group and all that drama, I feel for any woman that has to go through this publicly, whether it's true or not, whether it's true or not, the damage is the same. It's still embarrassing. You know what I mean? It's it's really embarrassing. This has been your partner for many years. I hope it's not true. I like them together as a couple, but it seems like there's a lot of issues there. And all these text messages coming out, I will say to the mistress, though, it's really hard to feel sympathy for you when you went into this with a married man and then you lie for him so many times. You lied to probably the wife. You probably did so much lying. Then you lied about the lie. Then you're like, well, I told the lie about the lie, but now I'm telling the truth. So girl, bye. Your credibility is out the door. When you come up with a baby and we see the baby with the DNA test, maybe we'll believe you. But you are part of the problem. You helped and now you want our sympathy. We don't give you sympathy. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. you, you're you so, not stupid. Everybody knew this man was married and you knew he was married to a big celebrity. Mm -hmm. right? So let me ask you this though, Q. I wanted to go back to that. So if he 100% is not guilty you don't think he should say hey guys she's full of crap i've never had any type of interaction with her this is a completely fake story me and my wife are happily married and i ask that you guys respect my space you don't you don't well, think he even have a space to say that well yeah if if he's not guilty but okay it, it's giving there's a little guilt there's and, a little smoke and, there. and, and, and if there is where there's guilt there's scandal and instead of making it bigger, just shut up and let it fizzle away. Gotcha. Okay. All right, y'all. Um, if you're not ready to be married and be faithful, then don't do it. No, you don't have to. You don't have to marry anybody. All right, take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Once again, in the comments, if you're enjoying the show, give us some flames, give us some teacup, just show us some love. And uh, we appreciate all of you for making our show what it is today. Okay, moving on. Summer Walker received backlash after she posed the qualifications she's looking for in her new assistant. She wrote, need male assistant, 2K per month, age 25 and older, uh, ATL. You have to have a car, have to know how to build stuff, preferably white or gay, just saying. And doesn't give a bleep about who I am or my music, just need you to come to work. Walker ended up hiring a black man and she claims she pays him $2,500 a week. What do you think about the uh, job qualifications and summer's need? Uh, you know, the qualifications need to be Summer Walker's assistant. Al, um, no, Q, let's go to you first. Q, 
<laughs> it's the, just for clarity, twenty five hundred a week or twenty five hundred a month? A month. In the script, it says a week, but I'm thinking it's, but it's a she month. Said a, yeah. She said it, on live a month. It, she said, yeah, it was a month. Um, you know what? I'm gonna just write this off to Summer being young and dumb and just don't know what to say out her mouth and just don't understand the ramifications and the implications of what it is she's saying. You know, unfortunately, she's playing into the stereotype that. Black people ain't reliable. You know, I don't want a black person because they're going to be ghetto. They ain't, you know, she's playing into that whole thing. Um, then she's tokenizing the gays. I mean, you, you, what does being gay have to do with your ability to be somebody's assistant? Um, you know, then she tried to clean it up by saying she don't want somebody hitting on her. But newsflash, Summer Walker, you're not attractive to everybody. <laughs> um, and then secondly, you know, she also tried to retrofit her answer to the backlash talking about right. y'all don't know if I'm having them come over one day a week or whatever to, to clean up. No, Summer, you looking for a full time assistant to, 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 to do everything. And honestly and truthfully, I think the adequate rate would probably be a thousand dollars a week for a job of a celebrity assistant and not no doggone two thousand dollars a month all right i hear you q i mean yeah, I yeah. Think... just for some clarity q she's claiming that the reason why the it's twenty five hundred dollars a month is that the person only comes one day a week for a couple of hours to handle a couple of things that's that's her argument there um i'm not surprised though claudia that she made this comment um this is not the first time that she said something that's been off color if you would or off-putting and can be interpreted as like you said dumb or stupid i mean it's so sad too because summer walker is so talented she's a good female rapper she's breaking all type of records over there at apple uh, music we also know that she's the only other female that's tied with taylor swift for having 18 songs consecutively concurrently on the billboard hot uh 100. it's just sad to me and it did not sit well with me how she brushed it off because what she said was 100 percent insensitive it was insensitive and it was tone deaf and it was borderline discriminatory. You know, she's saying the quiet part out loud that like uh, a lot of reality stars, I've spoken on this a lot before, so many reality stars use a gay man as their accessory. We talked about this at the beginning of TJF. Mm -hmm. That's actually what prompted mm -hmm. the show to be the way that it is and how it's not about, it's not gimmicky like that. Mm -hmm. Cause I really have, it's, I've always had a problem with that. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. When I moved to Atlanta, I go, so everyone got a gay sidekick, huh? So just any gay will do. If it's mm -hmm. a natural person that you end up having like great chemistry with, that's one thing. Summer, if they, it's a great person, if it's a great person that actually fills that spot, that's great, fine. But to say that out loud, it does give, I don't know, that's, it, it, it was weird. And $2,000 a month, okay, full-time, absolutely not. But if you are having someone come down, that's a part-time employee, like a little extra money on the side. And, you know, the problem is you are Summer Walker, and once you put this out there, people are going to criticize you because they expect it to be a lot more because you're a celebrity. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, but the white part, yeah. I, maybe she didn't want someone that knows who she is because doesn't want to know, like, spread her business because I know, you know, I don't know, maybe she thinks, like, I don't want anyone that's going to be messy and, like, Tell my business, but I mean, after like, six weeks of working with her, they're gonna figure out who she is and figure out her business. Truly. I mean, yeah. so yeah. that that's that's of no consequence. And there's black people that aren't really that familiar with your work too. Just if anything, work. she need to hire an older person, an yeah, old black that's lady. That, that's what she need. A, a forty plus black woman uh, that needs some part time money under the table who collected. Oh no, I think she said. I think she said they have to move stuff around and build, build. stuff. I think. Well, that. Well, Don't she got a man? Let me be quiet. Build stuff. And she want a white gay to do that? <laughs> I think she's looking for a Latino male. Okay. <laughs> she wants a white gay man to build stuff for her. Okay. Summer Walker, two words Good for luck you. With that. Home, <laughs> Summer Walker, Home Depot. That's what you, it sounds you like. Better, you be better off going, going and hiring you one of them underpaid WNBA players, honey. You talking about oh. like you? <laughs> <laughs> Claudia, go to the next I know, because I'm about to name drop, cancel. and I'm like, let me <laughs> let me not name drop out of work right, WNBA go, players go that live in Atlanta. Cancel. Okay, go, Claudia. Ooh, it's hard to not be shady sometimes. It almost makes me <laughs> ill. Okay, moving on. Bobby Lights took to Twitter to call up the people who judge him for getting high. 
But his message didn't land the way he intended it to. Bobby wrote, whole time bleeps be judging you for getting high, but the whole time they drinking Casamigos and getting fat. In the beginning, people were on his side because many assumed he was talking about getting high off marijuana. But people on social media soon discovered that Bobby was actually taking talking about a harder substance. One Twitter user posted, he must have just did a line right before he tweeted this. And Bobby replied, I don't do lines. A bump? Yes. What do you think about his post? And did he reveal too much? And what, Key, let's go to you first. What do you think about this? I definitely think he revealed too much, Bobby. And there's no comparison between Casamigos and eating good and doing hard drugs. Um, now, you know, I ain't one to judge because I've indulged in party drugs uh, back in my day, but I'm not going to sit up there and try to compare it to damn Casamigos and getting fat, Bobby. That That's a, that's a false equivalency. And uh, you probably should have just left that one alone, just like I said, with uh, Rocky and, and, and Old Girl. You should have just been quiet and let all of it die down. Mm, okay. Al, what do you think? I wanted to ask you, Claudia, it's true. You worked with them and, and from watching that reunion or uh, and you hosting it, you had to go off the stage like three <laughs> or four times because of all the fighting and stuff. And you could tell that one minute he was turned up, you know, he, he you could tell his mood swings. So I'm, I'm assuming that you can maybe attribute that to maybe he was using it then. But I wanted to ask you, what were your thoughts on, you know, him taking it head on? Um. Well, he has been honest about that. He that he that he's a party girl. Definitely has been honest about it. Um, I don't know. I didn't see him. Do, I didn't see him do any drugs. Of course, I wouldn't. But being high, drunk or high at reunions is nothing new. Mm-hmm. It's actually protocol for damn near the entire season on a lot of these shows. There's a lot of like, you know, drinks are provided and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if he was drinking or did any kind of drugs that day. I don't know. Um, I wasn't in his trailer. Got and, it. You know, I don't know. Okay. Um, but I don't think the same as Casamigos, but I feel like he would, he just needed to clap back. I feel like he wanted to clap back. Well, it wasn't a good one. Fighting. It didn't land. It give didn't land. The, give us the tea about the fighting. I got up a few times because a, a lamp went by me and a water bottle. And I was like, y'all are all grown men and I'm a woman here and I don't want to get hit by something. So I got up several times and it wasn't oh, until wow. four o'clock in the morning that we actually got to my favorite part where we actually had a heartfelt talk where people actually were talking and behaving as adults. And I said to them, if we would have started like this, it wouldn't be a typical Zeus reunion. And that would have actually made it even better because y'all had some good shit to say at 4.30 in the morning. And that's the kind of reunion I personally wanted to have, but I'm just one person. Cool. But I wanted to actually get into their stories and like their pain you know, there was a lot of people that had think that had some interesting things to say that really all they all weren't with the fighting. It wasn't everybody. It was some. And they got they sucked all the attention out of the room with that. And I wish we could have shown them in a better light. All right, y'all. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Once again, thank you for everyone watching us live and re-watching us tomorrow on the replay. Please tell a friend where they can watch us live every Wednesday and Friday. All right, y'all, we're currently in the happiest season of the year, right? Well, let's be real. Between hectic holiday travel, stressing over getting that family recipe just right, and dealing with that uncle's politics that are just wrong, the last thing you want to worry about is finding a great gift for everyone on your list. So in the spirit of giving, I'm sharing my go-to gift idea, which is a premium audio products from Raycon. Now, Raycon's wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers offer premium sound, useful features, and almost custom fit almost custom comfortable fit and up to 54 hours of battery life. Now, anyone you gift them to will find a use for them right away, whether they use them in the speakers to start a party in the living room or escape the party completely and use the earbuds for some much needed Zen mediation, meditation, I'm sorry. And as uh, the person gifting them, you're going to love that they start at half the price of other premium earbuds. Raycon makes this stressful holiday period easy with holiday gift guides for everyone in your life. And for the next month, Raycon will have a countdown to Christmas with a new pop-up flash deal for you to take advantage of every single day. You can find Raycon in stores like Kohl's or Walmart. But let me tell you right now, you're always going to get the best deals at buyraycon.com slash T-G-I-F. Now, the Raycon website offers free shipping, free returns, and buy now, pay later options, plus a 30-day happiness guarantee. Right now, go to buyraycon.com slash T-G-I-F to get 15% off site-wide with code HOLIDAY plus free shipping. 
That's cold holiday at buyraycon.com slash TGIF for 15% off your purchase. Check them out. Great stuff. And right in time for the holidays. All right, let's get back to the topics. Here's some weird news for you. A woman claims she's going to blind, going blind after tattooing her eyeballs purple and blue. The mother of five, Anya Peterson, said, I was just going to get one eye tattoo at first because I thought that if I go blind, at least I've got the other eye. I should have stuck with that. What are your thoughts on this crazy story? Q, let's start with you. I see you over there shaking your head. I feel the same way. This is the dumbest SHIT I've ever seen. I, I, you know, I, 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 I have a hard time feeling bad for anybody in this situation. I mean, this is what they make contacts for. Um, first of all, I, I don't know what type of pain threshold you have that you can let somebody take a tattoo needle and tattoo the whites of your eyes. Honestly and truthfully, it feels like the tattoo artist should almost go to jail for practicing medicine without a license. Okay. All of this just feels wrong. And I hate that she's losing her sight. But to be honest with you, I don't feel bad for her. Um, you didn't do right by the two eyes that God gave you. So now he's going to take them away from you. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> you got to appreciate what he gave you. and You didn't want them. Well, Q, you know, like you said, it's it's not the actual eye, so you can't buy a contact for this. This is called sclera tattooing, and sclera tattooing is when you decide that the white of your eyes, you want them to be a different color. So it's not actually tattooing, it's actually they use a tattoo needle to inject the color into the white of your eyes. And a lot of people are finding it very interesting in doing it. Yeah. The, the, the Italian model, what's his name, Christian Umbra, has decided to tattoo black on both sides of his brown eyes, so he could, you can't tell which way he's looking. And MMA fighter Popek has decided that this is a, a the black slara is something that he wants to do. Now, the interesting thing here is, Q, you're right. In many states, um, it's illegal to practice this type of eye tattooing or coloring. And in those three states that we know right now that if you did it, you might face some time is the state of Oklahoma and the state of Indiana. And Washington state, I think, recently has passed that it is illegal to do this type of eye tattooing in their state. And let me tell you, Washington State, you can get away with a lot because for a long time, bestiality was not against the law, but they cared about your eyes. Q, what you think about this story? <laughs> he already Slara, told us. Slara is slow. Slara is slow. This is just stupid. It just feels wrong. <laughs> Listen, I'd rather y'all go to Mexico and get them damn BBLs, them body <laughs> BBLs, than to be going tattooing y'all eyes. Don't, don't do that. And Al, I know you said you can't get contacts, but I know in the movies, they mm -hmm. got some product that you can buy to stick in your eye to make the whole thing a, a, a temporary color. color versus somebody sticking a needle in your eye. I wanted to come back to you because I know you'd have some more shade for this. I just think this is absolutely ridiculous. The body modifications. Yes, it's your body. You can do what you want, but like, one eye blue and one eye green. That's what I'm going to do. Mother of five. <laughs> and and I, I would never want to mess with my eyes. Like, look at this. Look this is what we need, the pro-life people, because this we don't need pro-choice on this. Okay? <laughs> oh, this is not a woman's right to choose with this eye stuff. This is what these people need to be standing outside with protests and posters and stuff, stopping stupid stuff like this. People trying to look like lizards and cats and all kinds of things. All right, y'all. Hey, to each their own, I guess. All right, I hope she uh, doesn't go blind. She did right. go blind. Is it all the way gone, though? She can see No, she went of, blind. Oh. I think it said three weeks. Three three weeks. I think she went blind for three weeks. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hey. All right, y'all. She ain't my mama. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, let's get into this Aubrey O'Day. She spoke candidly about her alleged affair with Donald Trump Jr. with page six. Aubrey says she sometimes wonders if she'll ever be loved the way Donald Trump Jr. loved her during their romance while he was still married to his then wife, Vanessa Trump. Aubrey claims their alleged affair ended once he decided to go be the president's son. She said, I love him, loved, love. I'll always have love for him, but I saw him choose a life that was inauthentic for status, power, whatever it is. I'm so disappointed in what he became. Do you believe Aubrey had an affair with Trump Jr.? Al, what do you think? You know what? I, absolutely. I mean, she she looks like his type. 
you know i mean she looks like the fast version of what he's married to in my opinion but you know what i thought that was very interesting claudia and you can attest to this is when she said that the donald trump jr that she witnessed him turn into is not the donald trump jr that she had a relationship with and knew before her before his father decided to run for president you and i both have agreed that the donald trump that i used to go to dinner with that whose wedding i attended who attended my wedding is not the same donald trump that we saw run for president that mirrors that of a white supremacist that created racial divide in this country as strong as he did. And I, I got to say, wow, this was an eye opener for me, because what it's telling me is that the father and the son and the entire family is a part of this hoax. Facts. Uh, so I did Celebrity Apprentice the season after Aubrey did it. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, they all, all the staff, the PAs, they was all telling me about how they was in a van together and how they was allegedly, they were, they, it was a known thing on set that they were having something going on. Now I used to be in contact with him. I would see Don Jr. all the time. We all rode on Trump's plane down to Orlando for one of our challenges. I talked to him on set. Um, he does not see, he was not anywhere near the, I don't know what to call him now, what he's going through now. But that he he does seem like a totally different person. I don't know if he's drunk on power, if he's on, or if he's on some battling some kind of substance abuse, or I don't know what he's on. But he's totally different than what I used to know him to be as his father, mm -hmm. because I would not have ever have ever had been able to be friends with Donald for many many years. When I would call him, he would call me. We would shoot shit on the phone. We would be friends. I later on found out about a lot of the racist things he did uh, that that we cannot deny with the Central Park Five and all uh, uh, with with all that kind of stuff. Um, but as far as he was around me, I feel like once he got into the political realm and got clowned and owned by Barack Obama at the, the White House Correspondents' Dinner, he started play, he realized he would placate and he would play to the racist fan base that felt ignored, that he would never allow any of his clubs to play yeah. golf, to stay at his hotels, that is not, those are not his people. And he saw success with that. So he went with what would get him success. Mm -hmm. I know in my heart of hearts, if he could have his way, he'd much rather be endorsed by the likes of Beyonce and, 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 and Oprah Winfrey and yeah. Diddy. He loves celebrity. He was in he Celebrity Apprentice, y'all. Yeah. If you think he likes these rural country folk, sorry, no shade to y'all, but y'all ain't his people, y'all. Mm -hmm. He's playing y'all and y'all buy it. You, what you think a billionaire wants with y'all? He likes celebrity. And they really got me. He, he really got y'all thinking like he's for y'all. Y'all yeah. y'all are exactly what he said. Dumb. Sorry. Q, what you think? I think she sounds stupid and disrespectful talking about he turned into something inauthentic. He showed up inauthentic. He was somebody's husband. He showed up to you inauthentic. Your whole relationship was built on mess. And I think you're extremely disrespectful considering the fact that this man got a wife and you're going to get on a public forum and talk about how he was your soulmate and you was in love and this, that, and the third. I mean, never once apologizing for the affair, talking about he was your soulmate. And, and, and honestly and truthfully, you sound as if the election or the presidency never happened. You would have continued a relationship with this man you just disrespectful and if that lady see your ass and Ruth Chris she should dive on you <laughs> but I think they were going through marital issues I, that don't got nothing to do with nothing it's you you still disrespectful right you soul man, my soul mate that's somebody's husband but you know what just from a political um um, running and trying to run the country. The wife that he has right now definitely looks look more matriarch like. She looks more, more, more royal than um, an Aubrey does. Don't you think? And, 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 and probably, but let me add another, uh, another layer to this. Aubrey wasn't damn in love with that man. Aubrey was in love with the idea of being into a damn wealthy family. I, you don't go from playing around allegedly with Diddy and, and rappers and R&B people to, to over there playing with, with Donald Trump. Girl, go sit down somewhere. Mm. Lisa wasn't the other brother. The other brother's even more hideous. The one that looks like Beavis. Oh, no, Butthead. <laughs> you know, the blonde one. Oof. I know Ivanka's like, whoo! 
Glad I got my jeans brought first. All right, y'all, Roller Ray is rolling back in the news that the people accuse, people on social media accuse him of scamming them. They claim they paid Roller Ray money for shout outs in his Instagram story, but he never posted them and allegedly stole their money. What are your thoughts on their claims? Do you think Roller Ray would really do this? Because he seems like a, he seems like he wouldn't do that. Q, what do you think? Well, listen, we are, we did a story a couple months back, maybe a year ago, where Roland Ray rolled off with them people money for at that at that club booking. So it seems as if right. Ray got a habit of rolling off with people money. Now I saw the Shade Room uh interview that one of the young ladies did. And I must say, she was going really hard for them $75. I mean, don't get me wrong, people work hard for their money and it's theirs, but Mama was going just a little too hard, in my opinion, by them doggone $75. And Ray, I'm just here to let you know, you are a pretty big influencer. You are underselling yourself. Um, you could be running off with hundreds of dollars, or, or did I say running? You could be rolling off <laughs> with hundreds of dollars. You are undercharging, Ray. You should be charging about, about, about $350 to $500 a post at your level, not $75, but um, get them people back that they, 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 they damn money for you get rolled over by karma. Okay, Al, what do you think? Hey, you know, I, I what, he did it. It's more than one person came forward. And I don't know, he says that, you know, he had someone man, who's, who was um, managing his social media and, and they got kind of behind and, and overlooked certain things. It wasn't something he did and that he was trying to make it right. So I think Roland Ray, you need to try to make for sure, make this right and get back on track. I will say this, and I, I've been guilty of doing this before. Like I have people that have sent me product and I had every intention of posting it, but then like months have gone by, I forgot about it. And they, it was never intentional. I just kind of got lost in the sauce, especially if they're not the bigger ones. Of course, the ones that are like $3,000, $5,000, $2,000. I'm not forgetting those, but the smaller ones, it's easy for them to sometimes fall through the cracks. Now, if, if, if you didn't do it on purpose, you can always make it up and say, hey, I was late. Let me give you an extra post now. You know what I mean? I think that would be the right. probably the best way to handle this. If you don't want to give the money back, which nobody does, you can, you know, say, hey, I, I promise I, you paid for one post. I'm going to give you two of my story. And that way, everyone's happy, right? I mean, the, the only difference is, though, Claudia, uh, people like Ray, they solicit for post. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Un unlike somebody like you get approached with a brand deal, they mm -hmm. solicit for posts. A lot of the Instagram influencers do. So if you're soliciting for posts, negotiating with people, telling them what your rate is, um, you need to pay them damn people and give them they shout outs for their business. And while we're talking about shout outs for it, I got to give a special shout out to Miss Heidi. She's one of our biggest fans. She loves our show. Miss Heidi, I want you to know that we see you and thank you so much for watching TGIF faithfully. You know what? And since we're bringing this up, I have to give a shout out to Mackenzie for his birthday that I forgot on Friday. I don't get paid to do these shout outs, but I did forget to shout out Mackenzie for your birthday. I think it's your 30th. Happy birthday. Since we giving shout outs, when I was saying at the Marriott Marquis in DC, like my girl Monique that was in the lobby that gave me some of her body butter, I will post her page and she is not paying me for the shout out, but I would like a free room next time I'm there because they, they didn't, you know, all right, they didn't, they didn't charges. All right, y'all, but we are available for posts, but it we ain't going to be $75. It ain't going to be 75 know. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Real quick before we get to the next story, um, I, I had to turn up the chat because I was like, I'm distracted. I am not messing with my face. I have been allergic to something and I don't know what it is. So I, I want to use this opportunity. If anyone has the home rem remedies that can take down swelling, I don't know what's wrong with my face, but I see it too, you guys. So you don't, y'all don't have to remind me. I'm not pregnant. I didn't get bad fillers. I didn't ask for this. It, send me your home remedies. Whatever y'all got, I try to ice my face. I took turmeric. What y'all got, please send it to me. You gotta I, drink some Tussin. <laughs> some Tussin? You gotta drink some Tussin. Is that what I need to do? A Tussin, and then, you know, black people love some apple cider vinegar. Apple oh, yeah, cider vinegar works. fix everything. Drink, drink a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Okay. And then if that don't work, 
Get that green rubbing alcohol in a warm <laughs> rag. Put that green rubbing alcohol in there. How is, how is alcohol going to reduce? Listen, it, it, listen. <laughs> ask, ask your grandma. It fix everything. Okay. And then green... if that doesn't work, is it the Vicks rape, vapor rub on my chest? On your chest, yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't know what it is, but I do look like I have a fat face. I'm not oh, pregnant. Oh, put Preparation H on it. Okay, it's just my cheeks, though. All right. You know, that's what people put when they have bags under their eyes. They put Preparation H. At put... this point... I'll try anything. I took a steroid. I, I'm trying to figure out what is going on. They said I might need to get a CAT scan to figure out where the swelling is coming from. So I don't know. Pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. All right, Joe. Let's get your thoughts on something that somebody I'm something somebody tweeted. Um, how do you make a bleep leave you alone for real? One Twitter user responded with, "Gotta start start liking him back." Do you agree with that response? And what is the craziest thing you've ever done to get someone to leave y'all alone? Wow, that's sad that we got to like light someone back and then it turns them off. Um, Al, what you think? <laughs> I think it was like about getting a man to leave you alone, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I have, I, I, I say tell them that you have erectile dysfunction. Oh. A woman would tell a man she got erectile dysfunction? No, I'm telling a man. It's oh, me. okay. She said, what would I do, right? Oh. The craziest thing that I would do to... They to have them leave you alone. Okay. Yeah, I would tell them that I have erectile dysfunction. Okay, Q. I'm trying to think what all I done told them. <laughs> 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 I mean, you can always tell them you got herpes. That, that'll that work. Oh. You just got to hope they don't go spread it, but that'll make them leave you alone. Oh, okay. You know... When I was younger, um, I would always, I, my best friends would laugh at me, but I would hit them with, like, if they would say, Claudia is not, you know, she's been hard to get to, or she's been, like, emotionally not there. I, we would have a whole game. We'd run, well, you know, her and her father didn't have the best relationship, so her issues with her dad, just be patient. But really, we would be like, I just don't like him, and I don't want to be mean. So, yeah. All right. I don't know about the herpes thing, Q. That's a bit extreme. Yeah, that's a race. Well, if you want him to leave you alone, I'm sure you tell his ass that he won't call you no more. But nowadays, with like 30% of people having it, they might be like, well, me too. Let's, let's get married. <laughs> yeah, herpes, no, but listen, honestly, 80% of adult people have a form of herpes. So Not me, I girl. I don't know if that works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last night, your favorite celebs hit the red carpet looking stylish at the People's Choice Awards. And because of that, let's play a game of hit or miss. All right, y'all, first up, Billy Porter. Was he a hit or a miss? I'm, I'm so tired of her. On that. I, I'm so tired of her. Like, we, we the shock, miss, it, it was a miss. We're over the shock value thing, Billy. Okay. Yeah. Put on some regular clothes. Yeah. I, it would be more, it would actually be more groundbreaking if he did wear something like. Yeah. Well, you, you've been there, done that. Okay. Next, we no, have Dwayne Wade. Okay. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Al. Go no, ahead. I was going to ask you because you know, you've been on a million red carpets. Like, where does he get the money to get the outfits to do that? Because those are some expensive outfits he wears. You know, the people want to dress you to, you know, be seen, especially someone as high profile as him. They know it's going to be in all the blogs. So half the time, you're not even paying for that stuff. Oh, okay. Know? Gotcha. Me, I'd be in Fashion Nova half the time. All right, y'all. Uh, next, we have Dwayne Wade and Louis Vuitton. Was he a hit or miss? From what I see, it looks pretty good. It was I, a hit. I it can't was see it up close, but I think, you know, that's probably a more tame version of Dwayne Wade on the red carpet. He actually looks very manly. Well, it's appropriate <laughs> for people's choice. Yeah, it looks nice. <laughs> What? Nothing. <laughs> you said he looked man as if he'd be dressing up like Zai Wade. I was a little wrong yeah. about it. No, he, I mean, he's, 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 he's very, no, Dwayne Wade pushes the limits, which I enjoy. And he, and you know, he's fashion forward. So he does things that are very kind of like, you know, he, he, he definitely pushes the limit and pushes the envelope. All right. How about Laverne Cox and uh, Kalina Strada? Was she a hit or miss? I'm gonna say a miss on that. I don't know what's going on below the waist, and I can barely see what's going on above the waist. But both of them ain't working for me. Yeah, is, is she got on a petticoat uh, up under there or something? Mm, nah, it looks like, like a it. corset with some type of. I like the top part, but not the bottom part. But I love I love a snatch waist, so I like the top part. Mm -hmm. All right, last but not least, we have Lisa Renna in Saint Laurent. Is she a hit or a miss? Hit. 
Yeah, I'm gonna give her a hit for that. That's that's nice. That's that's smooth. That plunging neckline. I always love to see women who have natural breasts that kind of mm -hmm. flirt with you when they are in an outfit. You never know if it's gonna come out or not. And I like the fact that it actually looks real. That's hot to me. With those great shoulders and neck, I'll take it. And I think there's something about her age that makes it even more enticing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that is by far my favorite cut, my favorite neckline. I, I've been on the red carpet many times with a plunging neckline because I, I I do have natural boobs. And it feels you fast. Like, you fast. You hide in the ass. First of all, you didn't call Lisa Renna fast. Don't call a black girl fast. You, you, you hide in the ass. Fast. That's what it is. I am not fast. <laughs> I am not fast. But I think it look cute. And the little designs on the cuffs. You see the little uh, accents. She has like some gold things on her cuffs. All right. Oh, cool. All right, that was a lot of fun. Um, until the next award show, we'll do that again. Uh, we got a few seconds left. Uh, I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Funky Daniva, for keeping the tea very hot and keeping it flowing. Had a good time. And thank you for watching us on YouTube. We appreciate that. Once again, please spread the word. 5 o'clock on the West Coast, 8 p.m. on the East. Some people still don't know that we come on live. So or two days a week. Some people still don't know we come on two days a week. And Claudia, yeah. don't forget to shout out that we had over 4,000 people in the chat today. And come on, guys, let's get that four to five. I think we can do it before the top of the year. What do y'all think? I agree. And stay tuned for an episode of Kitchen Talk. And we will see you on Friday where you get to be all nosy, all been our business, and ask us the questions that we'll try to answer. So we'll see y'all then. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.